I'm uh, Rosni Hingmang Guidel. I am Reshma Hingmang Williams. I'm Karuna Hingmang. I had heard about Christians, but I didn't know who or what they were. My eldest daughter, Reshma, was the first to become a Christian in our family, followed by my second daughter, Roshni. My dad was alive. We were all part of a big joint family. We were in one mountain, and opposite us, there was another mountain. In that mountain, there was a Bible college. That Bible college students used to come to our side of the mountain and run a Sunday school for the children. Uh, and even the Hindu children were allowed to go. We went there uh, for one reason. They used to give us old uh, used of Christmas cards. We didn't know what was written inside and all, but all we knew was that the pictures in the Christmas card was really pretty. My dad died, our dad died. Uh, when I was nine, everything changed. He was like the pillar of the house. My mom was uh, only 28 and she became a widow. In a Hindu culture, if you lose your husband, then you are no more accepted in that family. Then we started living in a very small rented room in the market area. My mom got really busy trying to food, put uh, like food on the table. And I didn't go to school for some time. I was taking care of like her. I was so filled with fear, insecurity. I didn't know what is happening. But I, I still remember the songs that were taught, uh, you know, in the Sunday school that we used to go to. But every time I thought about Christianity, every time I thought about Jesus, this beautiful picture of nice, bright, sunny day and peace and there is nothing to fear, kind of picture used to come to my mind. So I really wanted to believe in Jesus. I really wanted to become Christian, but I didn't know how. One day, um, I was, I think going, I had gone out to buy something in the shop or something like that. And I was going to my house. I met one auntie on the road. Uh, that auntie stopped me and said, Reshma, uh, do you know about Jesus? Have you heard about Jesus? I said, I already believe in him. I want to become Christian, but I don't know how. <laughs> and she said, you know what? A pastor has come to town with his family. He has come to start a church here. I, will, I want to take you and they introduce you to him. So this auntie introduced me to the pastor and I became his first believer. <laughs> because I was the only sheep, they started teaching me everything, you know, like they did. The, I think I got the best discipleship. I'm the only one, right? I was the church, so. I was 12 when I decided to go to church, but I was not following Christ. I was just following my older sister. My friends were Hindu and the rest of my family was Hindu, so even though I was baptized, it didn't really mean anything. I was still going to the temple and doing whatever my friends were doing. Basically, both my feet were in two different boats. But as the years went by, the youth meeting in the church was really very vibrant. So I started getting involved and gradually, I had my own personal relationship with God. I believe as I took a few steps towards God, He took many steps towards me. When my youngest daughter was around eight, she became really ill and I didn't know what to do. There was not a hospital in our village, but since we were Hindu, we went to witch doctors, temples, and tried all kinds of religious solutions for the problem, but nothing was helping. She had all kinds of sicknesses, it was not once, and I believe she was even demon possessed because she used to say, it's coming, it's coming. I don't know what is coming. We, none of us would see what is coming. She would say, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And she would just fall flat on the ground and, and she would just shake. Froth used to come out from her mouth and after some time, she would be okay. I was a new believer. I had no idea what to do. Uh, you know, uh, she would ask me to prepare things uh, to take it to the witch doctor or to, to you know, to do the ritual in the house. I would do it half-heartedly, in my heart, asking Jesus, Jesus, forgive me, you know, I don't believe in all of this, you know. Reshma brought a Christian pastor to our home, and he told me, keep trying everything you want. If nothing helps, we will take her to the hospital and pray for her. I still remember going to the kitchen, and kitchen floor, just cold, kneeling down and saying, God, I am not going to get up from this position until you do something about my situation, until you do something about 
my sister. I was very desperate for my daughter to be healed. The witch doctors were not working. So that day he prayed and left saying, tomorrow morning you can bring her to church for more prayer. The next morning I carried her on my back to the church because she was too sick to walk. They decided to take my daughter to a hospital in a bigger town. I remember saying if this medicine is going to help, if the prayers the Christian said are heard and my daughter is healed, then I'm going to believe in Jesus. Within one week, she was able to get up from the bed and she was able to move. She still needed help, but she was able to move. Within 20 days, she was walking around outside. So I took baptism. I did not understand much about the Bible or about Jesus. All I knew was that my daughter was healed. After one year of going to church, I started to understand just exactly what following Jesus means. I am married to Brian, and um, Brian started uh, the Agape Mission International. We are based here in Kathmandu and we work with at-risk children and at-risk women and leadership development. Me and my husband, we are the uh, ministry coordinator. I'm the in charge of women's center. We have a sewing class and we are making a candle, English uh, language. In language class and we teach some Nepali yeah, and sometimes we do a, like a cooking class and computer, yeah, computer class. class. And uh, when we say at-risk women, uh, we, we go to dance bars, we go to cabin restaurants. Cabin restaurant is basically a brothel. Apparently, this is I when I go to the cabin restaurants and when I share God with these women, they have many kinds of needs, physical needs, spiritual needs, but most importantly, they are in need of love. We go and build friendship with them and uh, share about God with them and share God's stories with them and uh, you know and find out if anybody wants to be rescued from there. Now in the beginning they might show interest not because they really like Jesus but maybe because they like that we give them encouragement and love. But I believe as they take a few steps towards God, God will reach out to them just as he did in my life. My job is actually a pastoral care for our leaders, for our staff. My job is to meet with them, pray with them, encourage them. We, we are not an orphanage or we are not a you know, children's home. But then what happens is a lot of children and women, not everybody finds a place. There are a lot of uh, cases where it's difficult to find homes for them, it's difficult to find ministries um, for them, uh, you know, for us to recommend. So then what do we do? Then we actually ended up taking them and they actually became part of our family. After I retired, my three daughters were married and working in ministry and I was alone. So I started helping with the girls. I started taking girls to my home across the border that could not stay in Kathmandu for safety and security reasons. I think so far about eight girls have lived with me. My job is to take care of them spiritually, make them go to school, and grow in the Lord. It was difficult at first. Many times these girls would not listen, they would not obey, and I would ask God, is this what I'm supposed to do? Is this what I am called to do? And many times I would say, God, if this is not my calling, please take these children away. In return, he would add more children, and so then I knew probably this is God's will for me. Recently, you know, um, in the cabin restaurant outreach, uh, I met uh, a lady who actually was the owner of the shop, on owner of the cabin restaurant. And uh, she told me, as a child, she wanted to become Christian, just like me. She wanted to become Christian. Her family was against it. And now, after many years, she is running a brothel. Someone shared the gospel with me, you know, not even knowing after many, many years, what would I be doing? And today I'm serving the Lord. We are so satisfied to know we are doing the work God has called us to do. I am so happy I'm able to share my God story as encouragement to those who are lost. But I believe like if I don't do what I'm doing, who knows where they will be after many, many years. They could be either like me, serving God, or they could be running a brothel. That is what I have learned, is without really knowing what will happen in the future, just to faithfully share God's stories with them, just to faithfully share the gospel with them. You know, God knows, only God knows. Who knows what God can do 